Hello and welcome to another episode of What Travis Says, the only show on YouTube where you're not actually watching a real living, breathing person, but a CGI rendition. My name is Travis and let's talk about CGIing actors who aren't actually alive anymore. There have been a few notable examples of studios using CGI to bring back characters played by actors who have passed on. Paul Walker in Fast and Furious 7, Peter Cushing as Grand Moff Tarkin in Rogue One. And Rogue One is different because Tarkin's role in Rogue One is substantial. He had just as much screen time as Peter Cushing did in A New Hope. But what if there was an entire movie with an entire cast of dead characters? People who have long passed away interacting with one another. You know those art pieces with Marilyn Monroe and Elvis and James Dean and Humphrey Bogart? We could get that movie. Now if a studio was somehow able to get the permissions to do that sort of thing in a tasteful way, would you want to see that movie or would you think that it would be kind of morbid? In the wake of Carrie Fisher's death, there's been more and more talk about using CGI to bring actors back from the dead for roles in future movies. Now we've talked about how Disney will not be bringing back a CGI Carrie Fisher for a General Organa in Episode 8 or Episode 9, but other franchises may see this technology as an opportunity. Take, for example, Doctor Who. There are three actors who have passed away since portraying the Doctor. William Hartnell, Patrick Troughton, and John Pertwee. All of the other previous Doctors are still alive, but some of them look very different than how they looked when they originally had the role. But according to Doctor Who magazine, Stephen Moffat may be sort of possibly exploring different ways on bringing Doctors back from the dead. He he said that having the return of previous Doctors was his first thought upon seeing Rogue One, but that Star Wars has a definite edge budget-wise over Doctor Who. He goes on to say that that sort of imaging is a bit beyond us, the BBC, for right now. He seems to think that something like this is a bit ambitious for Doctor Who right now, but the technology is there, and what a way for Moffat to go out if he was somehow able to bring Doctors back from the dead for his final episode or something. There was that scene at the end of Day of the Doctor where Matt Smith is walking up to join the group of all of the Doctors, and David Tennant turns around and you see his face, but that's because he was the only other one there, and then it did that sort of pan up, and you didn't see anybody else's face, really, because they were all digital. And they got away with sort of showing Christopher Eccleston, even though he didn't agree to be in the movie. And they showed younger versions of Doctors who are too old to look the part, and they brought back previous Doctors, kind of. It was this really fuzzy gray area where you kind of saw them. It wasn't great. It, they, they, they didn't have any roles. There were no lines or acting or anything like that. They were just standing there. Given how successful Rogue One was in bringing back Peter Cushing to play Grand Moff Tarkin, it's unlikely that this technology is just going to go away. It'll probably be handled on a case-by-case -case basis, as it should be. Side note, something kind of funny that I remembered while filming this, Peter Cushing actually played the role of Doctor Who in Doctor Who and the Daleks. That's just really ironic. We're talking about Doctor Who and Peter Cushing and Peter Cushing played Doctor Who. I'll link the trailer down below if you haven't seen it yet pretty wild. Let me know in the comments down below your general thoughts on using CGI to bring back actors who have passed away, and would you like to see this implemented in Doctor Who if it meant seeing all of your favorite previous Doctors? As always, my name is Travis, thank you for listening to what I have to say, and you will see me tomorrow.